Hey, everybody. Hi. I have missed you so much. It's Kelly, your girl. Welcome back to Warrior Wednesdays. I can't wait to see you come in the building because we are going to talk about freezing your eggs, all the reasons why, all the reasons maybe why not. I have an amazing guest. Hey, there you guys are. You're coming in. I missed you. I feel like my whole Warrior Wednesday family and I have just not been as connected as we need to be, but I was doing some self-care, y'all, and you know how we all need to do that sometimes, and I was doing that self-care with the illustrious, the divine, the wonderful woman that helped me freeze my eggs, Mama Stu. Mama Stu is in the building, y'all. Mama Stu is in LA, y'all, hanging out with me in the back. She's not going to be on camera, at least not today, but I know that she's going to be in the comment section. Welcome to Warrior Wednesdays. There's Mama Stu giving me a bunch of hearts. Happy Wednesday, everybody. Today, we're going to be talking about the topic of cryopreservation that's otherwise known as freezing your eggs and there's a lot to break down here i see broken brown egg regina townsend is in the building i see shaki my home girl is in the building saying hey to mama stew broken sweet sharon yes you are going to meet mama uh princess warrior from the uk you guys shout out princess warrior from the uk because i think it's like one o'clock in the morning there so there's women from the uk like eight hours ahead of the LA time zone that are here to be a warrior today to meet Alicia J to talk about freezing her eggs. Now, before I get into it, I'm going to mention this a couple of times during this. I elected to freeze my eggs, y'all. So did Alicia J at Tall Swag, who you are about to meet. But one of the things that I also want to mention okay is that it's not just for someone with ovaries that is waiting for the right partner or someone with ovaries that's waiting for the right career it may also be for someone with ovaries that may be undergoing chemotherapy radiation gender reassignment surgery or any underlining condition that may affect egg quality or even their uterus or their ability to carry a child so sometimes people are brought to this decision not by an elective choice, but by force or not even being ready for it. So there's a lot to unpack here, y'all. And there's a lot of things that we got to continue to fight for and get this information out. So we're going to do that today. Get your pen paper, send this live to a friend that may be thinking about freezing their eggs or even someone that may be having an underlining condition where this could possibly be an option for them. You know, Alicia and I are not doctors, but we are two black people that have ovaries that went through the process, and we are going to talk about it today. So without any further ado, Alicia J, you guys can find her at All Tall Swag, at All Tall Swag, okay? So she has this wonderful blog site about being a tall, gorgeous, illustrious black woman. And, you know, I was speaking to her yesterday and I said, girl, you are closer to God. I love it. But she has a story about growing up tall and being bullied and the way society treats her or dating treats her. Even her teachers have treated her. I need you to look at her website too, Tall Swag. I believe it's tallswag.org. I'll see when I get her on here because she has so many wonderful gifts for women that are of a tall status stature and there's so much that we can learn no matter what height you are and recently during covid she very courageously and bravely chose to froze to freeze her eggs uh during her birthday in covid and um she did it right here on ig i didn't do that y'all I, I didn't show y'all that she showed y'all the injections, the tears, the retrieval day. Like, it's all on her page. Tall swag. So I'm going to get her on here, Alicia J. And we're going to talk about it. What's up, Michelle Polston from Her Normal is here. Hello, J. Henry Live that says you're a huge fan. Tell some people to get in the room. Men are included, honey. Men are included. I miss you, Michelle. All right, you guys, without any further ado, here comes our guest, Alicia J. Put some flowers in the comment section. You know how we do it here on Warrior Wednesdays. We don't play those games. Games. So I'm going to bring her on, Tall Swag. I'm so excited. We get to share our stories with y'all today. Here comes my new friend. My brand new friend. A Broken Brown Egg says she goes, hey! 
There you are. How are you? Oh, I'm so good. And I'm so glad to get to like literally see you in person. I know we spoke yesterday briefly, but can I just tell you, I am a fan. I know I said that to you yesterday, but I am a fan. Hi, sweet friend. Well, hello. I'm a fan of yours as well. And your energy literally is everything. I mean, <laughs> And you just brought my energy up. I literally threw this shirt on. I was wearing like a t-shirt, had my hair thrown up, doing work. And I threw this on. And when I saw you come on, I said, oh, there's my energy. There's the energy that I needed. So thank there's you the that. energy. I love it. I love it. <laughs> welcome to Warrior Wednesdays and welcome to all of Alicia's followers. Hello. I am Kay Stewart. I'm Kelly Stewart. I'm just going to tell everybody really quick how we got acquainted, okay? Because I've been in these fertility streets for a minute, but Yvonne Orgy, who has been on Warrior Wednesdays, a good friend of mine, y'all might know her because she plays Molly on Insecure, on AB, um, HBO's Insecure. Yvonne was on your page and continuously tagged me to yeah. see you. And then all of a sudden it was like, oh my God, another black girl, another girl that did what I did, that took the steps that I stepped, and it was like instant fandom manium. Yes. And you did it all on Instagram. You included everybody. So I want to start a little bit from the beginning. I first want to talk about Tall Swag, because it's the best name ever. And I want you to just give Thank us you. a brief like synopsis of your growing up and how you came to be Tall Swag. Well, um, first of all, thank you for Thanks to Yvonne for like literally hooking us up and, and showing <laughs> us that we needed to know each other. So I yes. appreciate her on so many levels, but especially on this one, because um, this is so important. Um, but let me just tell you a little bit about myself. Um, I grew up in Beaverton, Oregon, and it sounds exactly the way that you think it is. Um, very small town in Oregon. Um, and even though I love that my family is still there and I love my family, it was a hard place to grow up being Black. Um, when we first moved there, I was walking down the street with my brother and they yelled the N-word out the window at us as we were walking mm. home from school. Um, so that was really hard, you know, growing up. Even I just went home uh, to see my mom and the neighbors flying a Proud Boys flag. So it just gives you just the climate that I grew up in. So, you know, I had racism, but then also I was 6'3 going into middle school. And uh, when people see that you have something that is different than everyone else, they attack it, you know? You, wait, they, pause right there, because somebody is going to get freed from that. When people see that you have something that is different than everyone else, they attack it. And what you have grown to learn, I'm sure you could say, because I know that I can say this, is that that thing that's different is usually, usually your purpose calling, right? It, it's attached to your purpose. Yes, it's your purpose and your power. Woo! So when people see that and they're attacking it, just know that that is something powerful. Um, but back then I didn't have the tools to know that, right? So I was depressed about it. I mean, it, I was not only um, verbally bullied, I was also physically bullied. Like they would, one time I vividly remember in the hallway at school, they tripped me and yelled timber as I went to the floor. So things like that happened to me. And even when I started playing basketball, because I started really late, once I realized that it could pay for school. I'm not even gonna lie. I was like, let me get into the sport so I can go to college. And right. um, I started playing basketball really late, but it didn't come naturally to me. And people think that tall people in general should just be good at sports. And so I got bullied for that. And it just got really low. You know, I, I was depressed. I didn't love myself. I was suicidal. And when I went into, by the grace of God, I made it to college. And when I went um, to college, I saw these women, my teammates that were tall, um, black, had curly hair that they loved, loved exactly who they were. And I just thought, I've been believing these lies that these people have been telling me. I've been Ooh. believing these lies. And it's time that I know who I am and walk into what God made me to be. And so I just started gaining my confidence. And I've never, you know, there are days, we all have days that, that we have moments, you know what I'm saying? So I'm not going to sit here and say that I don't. But at the end of the day, I know who I am. I know who God created me to be. And I know that my height is one of my gifts. And so that's why I created Tall Swag is to show everybody that you can stand tall every day in every way. Mm -hmm. I, I just, and you know, I have to echo something that you said because I think a lot of people can really relate to believing the lies that people tell you. And, and 
I think one of the things that that we can learn from what you just said is to give ourselves grace, Mm -hmm. right? Because sometimes we want to be so perfect. We want to feel like we're so empowered all the time and that we have the answers. And the reality is we are all subject to believing the lies, whether they come from bullies, whether they come from teachers, whether they come from co-workers or whether they come from that voice inside of ourselves that is telling us a lie because we are afraid of our own power our own truth so I just want to echo what you said and and I want to I want to commend you for finding your own truth and and walking in it and so tall swag then the website the blog the, the way that you are reaching the world with it so how did that come to be? Was it an idea that popped in your head? And the reason I ask that is because we are women, we are entrepreneurs, we got people in this audience that want to, you know, that may have believed a lie and are hearing the truth now. Mm-hmm. How, what advice would you give them about how to turn that thing over? Start. That, that is literally the thing that I tell you to do is start because we often look at these big ideas that come into our head and we think that we have to accomplish them right away. And that's not the case. In actuality, the change that you're going to make is along the way. It's not even at the destination of making what you're making. Um, You're a testament to that in what you're doing right now. This is exactly what you're doing right now is along the way to, you know, the project that you're working on and this beautiful thing that you're making, you're changing lives along the way. So, just start. Just, Just begin. Start. Just start, y'all. Just yeah, start. I, mean, I started by telling my story to one little girl. And the way that she reacted to me was so inspiring that I was like, I can do this on a platform. And so I slowly, and I'm talking about, I've been doing this since college and I'm 40, y'all. Ooh. So I, this has been something that has happened over time. It didn't happen right away. Right. So, so literally just start. And that's very, very important to say, because what you're what you are preaching to is that it's in the journey. It's not in the destination, because I never thought you guys when I talked to Alicia uh, yesterday, I was letting her know about the film. Y'all know about the movie. And I was telling her that when COVID hit, that's what created Warrior Wednesdays. It was the pause that God gave everybody in our life. And that's Mm -hmm. what brought me to this platform. So little did I know there's no way I could make a movie or do anything without this warrior community, without speaking to you today, Alicia. Mm -hmm. So I just want to say thank you for that advice about starting you guys. It is in the journey. It's not in the destination because it's going to take twists and turns. And that is where you are really going to find your more of your power, more of your truth. Right. So I want to get into it now. We we are two black people with ovaries. That yeah. elected that elected to freeze our eggs, child. So I wanna I wanna listen, I wanna get into it for so many reasons. I want everybody to get a pen and paper and to share this with a friend because there are there's so much information about reproductive health that we are not taught until we are brought to a time of panic because we are going through an infertility journey, or until we are brought to a time where we are going through a diagnosis of cancer or something and we have to make the decision for cryopreservation. I really wanted to bring that up. It's, sometimes it's not elective because you're waiting on a partner or a career. Sometimes a medical condition may lead you to this decision. Um, or you know, it's just something that you decide to do um, because you want to have a future family and the time is not now. I want to ask you, did you always want to be a mother? Yeah, I've always wanted to be a mother. Now, I don't know if I I can say that I've always wanted to give birth per se. Um, and, and I'll say and I'll say this because I think there are so many ways for you to be a mother. Um, Speak on it. Like right now, I'm current. I'm a godmother, and my god baby Dallas is amazing. I love her to death, and she is the light of my world. So I can, you know, I think there are so many ways. There's adoption. Um, You can also have a child through surrogacy. Um, You can be a foster mom. You can be a bonus mom. Um, There's so many ways for you to be a mother. And uh, so I knew that I always wanted that. You always wanted that in some way, shape, or form. So now I want you to bring me to the place, and even a little bit before the place, 
where freezing your eggs either popped in your head and how was the decision made? Because we all know it's a personal decision. Yes. It is a physical decision. It's a financial decision. And for me, and I'm sure for you, it is a spiritual decision. So can you back us up? to what was the thing that brought you to the decision, I'm gonna freeze my eggs? So there were a couple of things. Um, I'll say the first one was during COVID, I turned 40 and I was a little bit down. Oh, thank you. Happy thank birthday, you. child. Y'all give us some birthday stuff or something because that's a, that's a decade of elevation, honey. That's what Listen. I call my 40th birthday. It is a decade of elevation. So put some birthday stuff in the comment section. We're going to throw you a little birthday party here, too, while you talk about this birthday present of freezing your eggs that you gave yourself. So you sure turned 40 in COVID. I turned, for, I turned 40, and I'm not even going to lie, I was a little down because yeah. I was trying to be on somebody's beach, you know, looking cute or doing something uh, for my 40th birthday, but I was in my house, um, you know, just celebrating me, I guess, but I was down at the time. And, and if I didn't say I was down, that would be a lie. Right. Um, but it really got me to thinking about my future. And I was sitting there and I'm like, you know, one thing I do know about my future is that I don't know what it is. And, and that is just, that's just the truth. That's the one thing I know. And it's okay. And it's, and it's okay. okay. It is okay. And that also brought me to a place of power in the egg freezing process because I was like, you know what? At the end of the day, if I have these eggs frozen, I know that there's a chance. If all else kind of goes awry and does not work or isn't the path that is supposed to be for me, I at least know that I have these in the bank. And what you're saying, and I want everybody to be clear about what you're saying. We're not doctors. Alicia no. and I are not doctors. We're not scientists. We are two people with ovaries that froze our eggs. And it's really important because, especially in the Black community, we are not in the forefront of this conversation as it is on a global stand, that, yeah. that, that Black women are out here preserving their fertility. Now, I'm not just, you know, even if you don't know if you want to have a baby, not every woman wants to have a baby. But one of the things that, that I think is 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 really key to say is that when you freeze your eggs, y'all, you are freezing your potential fertility. Yes. Because one of the things that I think gets lost in the conversation, there's a lot, we're gonna unpack it, all, unpack it all, is that we think if we freeze our eggs, we're definitely gonna have a baby from that egg. And we need to be clear to say that is nothing is guaranteed, but what it does give us is an insurance policy because it's not just about the quantity of eggs, it's about the quality of eggs. So being able to freeze eggs and bank some eggs means to what you were saying, in the future, if different things go awry, you have this incredible, amazing option of, of frozen eggs. Yes. So you were thinking about that, and then you made the decision in COVID, you're gonna do this, and you're gonna do this by yourself? What was yes. that? Yes. And another, now when I said there was two reasons, another reason was, so I'll try and make this long story short, but I was at a career for a long period of time and it became toxic and I had to walk away mm -hmm. um, for me. Um, and just honestly, I knew I was made for more. So I made for that. more, put it in the comment section, y'all. Y'all better know when you made for more. I'm, I always do that because when you drop gems like this, they're going to get in the comment section. Made for more. Okay, please, continue. Please put it in there. Um, and I, in order to do that, I saved up some money um, and I had a plan of action as to uh, what I wanted my personal brand to be and where I wanted to go. A lot of that was public speaking. And so when COVID hit, I was like, well, what am I going to do? Because even though there was virtual opportunities, it wasn't the same as it was before when you're like traveling and, and speaking and doing these things. So um, I got a job with a company called Stitch Fix where I did online styling um, and I also wrote blogs because I also write. So, um, but with that position came fertility insurance that they had that they gave to people that worked there. And it was a $5,000 credit through it's called carrot so a lot of company well not no a lot that's wrong 
some companies are doing it now. So what I want to tell everybody is before you make the decision, always just ask the company. If you do work for a company, ask them if they have any fertility benefits. And if they don't, ask them why they don't. Uh, 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 stop. Somebody put some preacher hands up there, some spirit hands. That is so important because we do not empower ourselves to ask the companies that we work for, do you have fertility benefits? And if the answer is no, then ask why not? Did y'all hear that? Because these things will not change until we speak truth to power. So you, did you ask or was this something that you that they told you was offered? It was something that they told me like on my onboarding that was offered. So I had already been having these feelings of like, I really should do this for me and for my future. And then God, because I'm a person of faith. Um, and if you're not, that's okay too. But for me, I was like, God gave me a tool to do it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, because as a single person, egg freezing is expensive. Like, and, it, and it's an expense that not a lot of people have saved in their bank accounts for. Um, I being one of them, like I have a savings, but at that point in time, it was just to live, right? <laughs> so, um, but I saw that and I said, you know, man, like $5,000, that's huge, you know? That, that's amazing. And, yeah. and I, I want to, because we, because we both went through it and we went through it at different times in our life. Mm -hmm. in different circumstances. Mine was through a breakup. After seven years, I realized I gave my best baby making years to the wrong relationship. Mm -hmm. I was 37 when I did it. And I just want to speak a little bit because there's two things I want to say before we, we continue your journey, because we're on the financial piece of this. And I think that that's a reason that a lot of people with ovaries stop cold and say, well, that's something that I can't afford. So there's two things I want to offer. What I did, y'all. So Alicia had a $5,000 credit from her new job. And there's something also that you said I think is important. You were thinking about it for a while. Yes. And then all of a sudden, God put you in a job where a credit was given. Mm -hmm. I was thinking about it for a while. And then all of a sudden, that relationship ended and it became urgent. Mm -hmm. And what I did, and so I say that to, to people because if there's something percolating in your mind, whether it's freezing your eggs or something, if God is whispering something to you, because I'm a woman of faith, listen to what he is saying to you because Absolutely. he will provide the way. So for me, I get a lot of credit card applications in the mail that, you know, you can get $10,000 here, you can get $20,000 here. So I just gathered all the ones that I got when I made the decision to freeze my eggs. And whoever gave me the biggest limit, y'all, that's the card that I called and said, hi, I would like to sign up. And I put my entire egg freezing journey on that card and eventually paid it off. But the other thing I want to say, because we're talking about finances, and those that are not new to Warriors, they know I say this all the time. Alicia, I'm going to ask you, before COVID, about how many baby showers did you go to a year? Listen. Give or take. Girl. Listen. About <laughs> three, four. More than that. More than that. Keep baby showers. Babies left having yes. babies. So now we're spending <laughs> 75 to to $100 on a gift yeah. for four baby showers. That's about $400. And then first birthday parties and all of the things. And so what I want to say to y'all, if this is something you want to do and you don't think you can afford or you don't know yet, throw yourself an egg shower. Yes. I say this all the time. Just because you are not partnered or pregnant does not mean that you do not have the right to support and, and encouragement from the people that love you for the life choice that you are making. Mm. Throw yourself a party, child, get some pizza, get some games, and call it an egg shower. Register at paypal.com, at venmo.com. Do not think that you do not deserve to have a party because you made a choice about your future. So there is, where there is a will, there is a way to get the finances to do this. So for Alicia, she had the credit. For me, I got a credit card. For y'all, it might be an egg shower or just don't go on that vacation with if you want this you can do this yes so i just wanted to get that in there now i want you to start us through the process so now 
Well, we're going to do it. Oh, go ahead. And I mentioned one thing. So yes. um, when I decided to do it, um, on top of that, I was like, I'm going to share my story, right, on my platforms. Because for me, I believe that we're built to share our stories and that every time we share our story, it literally inspires somebody. So I was mm -hmm. like, I have to share this process because I know there are a bunch of me's out there, right? Mm -hmm. And so I like, because I have this platform that I, that I have built um, that is standing tall every day in every way, including in your fertility. I literally sent emails to fertility clinics in the area. And I said, hey, I wanna share my story. Would you like to partner with me? And the first one that I did it with hit me back and said, yes, we would like to do it. And yes. So okay, y'all, did y'all hear that? So <laughs> you, you decide you're gonna freeze your eggs. You've started tall swag because like you said to us earlier, just start. So you know you have this platform. So you found fertility clinics in your area, sent emails, I'm going to do this, would you like to partner with me? Yes. And the first one you sent out to said yes? Yes. And the reason why I sent them, they're um, amazing. Um, and this is not an ad for them, you guys, it's just based on my experience. But per Pacific Fertility Center, the reason why I sent them that is because I went to University of the Pacific and I was like, oh, Pacific, Pacific. <laughs> and that is the one. And so it's all a part of my story, like literally all a part of my story. And it's just, you know, the little things that God does, you just got to laugh with them sometime. I see you. Like, I do that. I'll be like, I see you. I see you. <laughs> he just be showing up to let you know. But faith right. without works is dead. Faith yeah. without works is dead. And what you did was you decided you wanted to do something and you put your faith into action. That's why I said, if there is a will, there's a way. And just coming up with that idea, like, guys, I want you to share this with people because just coming up with that idea, hey, maybe somebody will partner with me and yeah. that will be a way to ease a little of the financial burden. It's an amazing and beautiful thing, but it's also, it's gonna cost you, right? Because it's very vulnerable. Because very now good. what you're saying is, I'm going to do this on my platform. So I want you, so now we're here. Now we got a partnership. We got yep. a $5,000 credit. But but I also want to say this last point because I really want to tell the story, but I think this is really important too because I didn't know that this was out there at all. But while I partnered with them, there was a um, the only part that I that I had to cover was the the drugs, and as people who have been through it know, the drugs are very 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 expensive. expensive. Mm -hmm. um, and um, my clinical coordinator. Uh, who was talking to me about the cost and everything. She was like, there are some programs that will help with the cost of the drugs. Now, I don't know if you've ever talked about this before. You may, I'm sure you've covered it in something, but I just wanted to share what they were because, okay. Please do, because so, I, I, I don't think that I know them for egg okay. freezing. And, and I'll send them to you after this too. So um, I'll just give you guys, because you know, I'm very transparent. I <laughs> love it. If you follow me, you know I'm super transparent. Get your um, pen and paper, y'all. My drugs, were, I'll tell you this. My drugs were going to cost $4,343.56. But with the discount that I got, and I'll tell you about the program in a second, they only cost $2,749.45. Um, and the drugs that I took for my course, you know, of egg freezing, um, and I wrote these all down because y'all know it, it's hard. I'm probably going to say I'm wrong, too. So just bear with me. Menopour. Were Menipure, Menipure, Gamerlex, <laughs> and Pregnil. Yep, Pregnil. yep, same. Um, and so the the program that she sent to me was it's called Reunite Assist. So it's R E U N I T E R X dot com, and then you click on discount programs. And for me, because I had quit my job, remember I told you like I'd resigned. I had a low income year that year. I t I qualified. So literally there are those programs. So there's that. And then there's another one that I didn't qualify for because I wasn't taking those particular drugs, but it's okay. called compassionate care. And you go to fertilitysavings.com, fertilitysavings.com. And it's for some, another like course of drugs that um, 
are often prescribed to people who are freezing their eggs. It just wasn't the one that I particularly, that they prescribed to me. Um, but those are two programs that, listen, just- I need you to say it for me one more time because Nichelle yes. or Regina Townsend or Princess Warrior or Mama Sue, I'm calling out the, the regular Warrior crew, mm -hmm. the series regulars. Can y'all please put it in the comment section? Y'all know I don't know how to pin it. Y'all already know. Can you say me the? T can you tell me the two things again? Re yeah. Reunite. What was so the it? The first one that I personally use um, is Reunite Assist, but it's R E U N I T E R X dot com. And okay. then you click out, and you click on Discount Programs. And click and then, out on discount program. Okay. And the other program is Compassionate Care, and it's under FertilitySavings.com. FertilitySavings.com yeah. for and Compassionate for, Care. Yeah. So based on the, the drugs that you're prescribed for your egg freezing, um, just see if you qualify. I mean, I just happened to, I wouldn't have qualified if I had kept my job. I'll tell you that right now. I wouldn't have qualified. But because I was in the situation that I was in, pursuing my dreams, like, living off of savings and things like that. I had a low income year. And so I qualified for that as well. But I just lit when she told me that I said, I need to share even more because I know people don't know about these programs. Girl like at all. Do you hear me? Y'all, we are going to put this um, when we, when I put this back up on Instagram and on the website, I will put this information there. I will get it from Alicia in the meantime. Some of our regular warriors have put it in the comment section. So go ahead and grab the information. Alicia, let me just say from one egg freezer, from one person with ovaries to another, thank you, my dear, because I have never heard of those programs. I did not know those programs. Shaquita Lockley is on here. She has a, um, a amazing docuseries called Eggs Over Easy Film that is going to be on OWN. And I am blessed to be a part of it. And even she wrote, who knew? We did not know this. I, I did not know this. So uh, Nichelle Polson said she's already working on a graphic for it. So the, the girls here are, we, we will help you spread this word because so many people need to know that there is help available. So thank you for that. And I'll tell you that, no, I mean, again, that's why we tell our stories, right? Because literally, I knew that I was doing the right thing when I kept getting this information. Cause I was like, I know that I am a conduit to spread this information. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, when this, when her name is Veronica, thank you, Veronica. I, you know, I asked her, I was like, Hey, are there any programs? Because I'm all about a program. I'll right. sign up for a program in a second. And she gave me those programs and I signed up and I qualified for one. So I don't know if you will or not, but it's worth the try. Let me tell you. I will tell you there is power in asking a question mm. and, and there is power in asking it multiple times to multiple people until you get an answer that serves your goal. Yep. Did y'all hear that? Mm. There is power to asking the question and there's power to asking it multiple times to multiple people until you get an answer that serves your goal. Because the reality is you heard signs from God. He was letting you know, I'm in it. I'm in it, as did I. And when we are in it, we are empowered to ask the questions and know that the provision mm -hmm. is waiting for us. So I, am, I commend you. I commend you for being so proactive in getting all of the resources that you could when you went through this process. And I want to talk a little bit about the process. Now, everybody can find you at, at Tall Swag, and they can actually go down your page and see some of the emotional and wonderful, well-thought-out posts that you've put out during the process. But let's talk a little bit about the injections. Let's talk a little bit about yes. the, well, let's go from, let's go from the beginning here. Let's, let's go from the consultation, from the whole fertility diagnostic test of it all, the ultrasound, the blood test. Tell us a little bit about your experience. Yeah, so I was nervous um, on my way to getting the the first, you know, ultrasound. Um, I was nervous that, you know, what are they going to tell me? Because I had never checked on my fertility health ever. Ever. You know, in ever. my life. Me either. Me either. And, mm -hmm. Yeah. And the thing that I just kept thinking as I was, because I had to drive to San Francisco from Oakland, as I was going through the tunnel, I was like, 
I should have just been checking on my health all along, you know? Let's because, breathe that out. Let's man. breathe that out. Because that is something that I don't shame myself for it. I don't shame anybody for it. But because we're not, talk, we're not taught reproductive health, we're taught sex education. If you yes. do this and you do this, you're going to get a baby. But we're not taught about how all of this actually works. Yeah. So we're not even taught, y'all, that there are fertility diagnostic tests where you can get blood tests for your AMH, your anti-malarian hormone, your FSH, your follicle stimulating hormone. There are ultrasounds where you can actually see the follicles. The follicles are fluid filled sacs with an egg, with an egg cell right in the middle where you can see follicles from your ovulation cycle come up. We are not taught that we actually can check on our fertility. So yeah. it makes perfect sense that you and I both had never done that until we went to freeze our eggs. But what Alicia and I are here to tell y'all is do it now. Yes. Do it now at any age. Do it yes. now. The sooner so the better. The sooner the better, right? So you get the test done. So blood tests came for you? Yes. Yeah, so I, we did the vaginal ultrasound. We did the blood tests, um, all of those things. Um, and just from the vaginal ultrasound where they were showing me, you know, it was, it was crazy to see everything, by the way, nice. yeah. um, which I show that in the YouTube videos that I posted as well. But um, I just felt, I, it went from fear to powerful because for me, that, that knowledge of knowing like what my health was, it, it helped me in my past, no matter what. You know, even if it was something where they said, you know what, you, you're not really able to have children. Um, I would know that the next path that I'm going to go down is either like adoption, being a foster mom or whatever the case may be. And so for me, like that fear um, was, I, I don't want to say erased because that would be a lie, yeah. but it was very much lessened to power at yes. that moment because I was like, I actually know a map of where my fertility can go. And that is, that is such, I, I'm so glad that you said that. After my relationship ended, I felt powerless. Because mm -hmm. like I said earlier, I gave away my best baby making years. That's, that's really what I, what I believed. And I, I just want to share that, and maybe you felt a little bit of this. Um, when, when we broke up, I was on a Sunday. And I was in the fertility specialist office on the following Wednesday with my knees up in the air and a fertility doctor in between my thighs y'all and I cried I was alone mm. my mom wasn't out here I was by myself and I thought this was not the plan this was not what I thought my beginning of motherhood would look like yeah I didn't think I would be by myself praying and hoping that there's some sort of positive something at the end of all of these tests so it is this it is a powerless feeling, but there is something, whether you're giving good news, what you think is good news, or whether you're giving news that puts you on a detour to a different path, we count it all power, right? Because at least now we're in the know. So one of the reasons Alicia and I are so passionate about sharing this with you guys is that get in the know. We want you, like she said, sooner rather than later because your egg quality does decrease the egg can for those people that don't know you are born with as many eggs if you're that you're ever going to have a person with ovaries you are born with as many eggs you're ever going to have you do not make more okay you don't make more and it's very important for you to know they're even four months older than you when you're in utero in your mama's belly your eggs are formed at four months before you even come out. So our eggs are actually older than us. So get the power by getting the knowledge. So there you are, and you get some news that you're a candidate, that you're yeah. a good candidate to freeze your eggs. And, and so now they're going to send you home with the medication. And um, did they send you home with a CD of how to do the med medication, how to do the shots? Tell us a little bit about the explanation of all that. Yeah, so they actually, they, they ordered the medication and it was actually sent to a FedEx. So I had to go pick it up, um, which was also crazy because I was like, don't be losing that medication now. <laughs> <laughs> and 
and that's why I even had it sent to a FedEx because I was like, if it comes to my house and someone steals this, like I'm gonna be sick. Right. But um, but anyway, so when I got home, there's a, they have actual videos that show that showed me like online. Uh, there's a portal that they have, um, and I'm sure a lot of fertility clinics do it as well to show you, you know, the process of doing it. Um, and at first I was going to have a friend do it for me because she's a PA and she, she knows how to do all the injection things and all of that. But then there was just something that came over me that just said, you know what, like you can do this, mm -hmm. you can do it. It's not ideal. It's not where you thought you would be, but you can do it. Mm -hmm. You can do it. And so I decided to give myself the injections. Um, and I had a moment, the first time I had the injections, I had a moment where I broke down because I just felt like it was so unfair um, mm. that women have to go through this, you know? I, I had a moment and I'm getting emotional right now thinking about it where it's just like, I just felt like I was just standing with, with women and, and all of their different fertility health levels, right? Um, and just thinking like, man, I, we shouldn't have to go through this. And, right. and I'm with you, I'm here with you, and I'm, I'm, part of, I'm part of this. I may have a different, like, diagnosis as you do in fertility, in my path in fertility, but I'm with you. And I just had a moment where I broke down. And, you know, I was, I was mad for all of us that have to go through it, to be honest with you. Um, I had some, like, very, very real conversations with God during the process, too, just in that, you know, I'm a great person, I feel like, you know, uh, I bring Girl, a lot to the it. table, you know <laughs> what I'm saying? And I was just like, why isn't someone here, Lord, to, to share in this with me? Or why, why didn't I meet someone and have to go through this at all? Why do I have to do this expense? I, I had those moments during the process. I, um, I echo that. And I, I just want to share for those that may be thinking of it, that it, it, I echo it because it is part of the process feeling, um, angry yeah feeling left out mm -hmm. feeling even though you know for you and I we elected to do it because you know we both decided I want to have a child and tick tock you know yeah. the clock is really really ticking here and that's why you say sooner rather than later people with ovaries sooner rather than later but I was kind of in panic mode and um I broke down a lot. There's number one, we are injecting hormones, right? So yes. it is affecting our emotional life. It's affecting our mood. But number two, it, it puts your whole life in front of you yes. in a way that you weren't really ready to face. And you have to face the hard truth. Now, if I cry, I cry. For me, I'm alone. I have now seven years of relationship gone. Mm. And I'm a single great woman, but I don't know what God has for me next. Now I'm putting, to your point, needles in my belly, y'all. In my belly. Bruises. As a form, bruises, pains, stinging, mm -hmm. as a form of hope. Yep. And I want to be clear here, and I don't mean this in a negative way, but hope is hard. Mm. It's hard. And so it's very intentional to call ourselves warriors because what we're saying is that I am going to hope in spite of the fact that the, the way my future is looking is nowhere near what I thought it would be. And especially at that age, because we were around the same age, hoping as we get older is even harder. Yeah, It feels even even less probable and yeah. yet and still here we were doing this thing in hopes that God's promises would come true. So I echo um, the feeling of, of those, those breakdowns. Now, I don't know if I, I'm going to ask you, like, these are just some quick little things. Did you put ice on your belly girl? Because I knew my, my belly was getting hurt over time. Yes. I definitely iced. Um, at first, I'm not even gonna lie, I was afraid to ice because I was like, I don't want to ice the medication in my body. <laughs> you know, like, I was like, I want this stuff to work. If I'm doing all this, it better work, you know? Right, right. Um, but, you know, the doctors consulted the doctors. They're like, girl, if you don't put ice on your belly. So um, I definitely did that. And I'm yeah. not even gonna lie, 
I ate some comfort food like it was no tomorrow. I gained 14 pounds and I honor and I honor every pound of that because I needed it. Every French fry. Now I don't y'all, it was one. the medicine I ate and I would fall asleep right away. I would take the shot. I would eat a cheeseburger and some French fries yes. and I would fall asleep. And I was like, I earned this cheeseburger. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm going through cryopreservation. I earned this cheeseburger. So Absolutely. you gained some weight. Yes. You cried it out and cried it out. had some talks with God, right? And how many about how many days was, was your cycle of injections? Mine were around 10 to 14. Yeah, so mine was 13. So I started on June 13th and my retrieval was on the 24th. So I think I did the math right there. Uh, 12 days, 12 days. 12 um, days. And yeah, so it was, it was actually a little bit faster than I thought it was going to be. Um, but thank God, like my body was reacting to the, you know, the, the amount of drugs that they were giving me and everything. And um, at first it didn't look that way. I also want to say this um, to people at first when we did um, the first, um, cause you go, I want to say like every four days to get a ultrasound um, and to get tested just to, to see how things are going and also to see when you get the trigger shot. So um at first, I had nine good eggs on one side and some, I think it was like, they said like seven on the other and they were not maturing as fast as the other ones. And I had a friend who had just went through the process and she was like, girl, don't, don't worry about that. They're going to come through. They're going to come through. Like, they're not seeing them all. Like, don't worry about it. And I was like, all right. Cause you know, I'm just thinking I want at least, I mean, I, w I was hoping and praying for at least 10, um, you know, for the first, cause I'm, I'm even thinking about doing it again, but we can get to that um, in a second. But like, um, and she was like, don't worry about that. You, you're going to have eggs. Like, don't worry about it. And so she actually helped me. And that's another thing. God put her in my life at that point too, to, to ease my fears. But, um, and it ended up being that at the end of the entire cycle um, that I had 21 eggs um, and 13 were mature. 21 eggs and yeah. 13 were mature. So I want I want you guys to hear that. And first of all, congratulations, because you. you did it. And, and you got 21 eggs and 13 mature. And what Alicia was describing going back and forth to the doctor's office about every four days, I think for me, Mama Sue, like I said, she's in my bedroom, she can attest to this. Um, I think I went every other day, actually, okay. um, in my cycle, I took the same medications that you did the menopor and all of those types of things I ate like a fiend. But what they do you y'all is that they take blood samples, and they do the ultrasound test because they're basically measuring the eggs what Alicia was saying to the maturity. So they are mimicking nature as best as possible. So getting those blood tests and getting those ultrasounds are a part of it. And the reason that I want to bring that up is because I did it during the Christmas holiday. This was a Christmas present to myself and to my mama. Um, and But I want people that may be thinking of it to know you kind of got to block out like two and a half to three weeks of your life for this process. Yes. This is not something that you can just do on a fly because right alicia things are timed can you talk about that a little bit in terms of the timing of the medication like all of these things are important because yeah. if you go off of that cycle you can you know you can ruin the the process and not have mature eggs so can you talk a little bit about that block of time dedicated to this yes yeah, so when you take your first shots um which i don't i don't know if it's like this for everyone but i'll just speak to my own process um Mine were at night um, and you have an hour period before and an hour period after, but that's like your grace period of when you should take the shots every single night. Um, and so, you know, I tried to get it like right on the dot because just in my mind, I was like, anything I can do to make sure that this process goes off without a hitch, like will ease my mind that I'm doing everything that I can to get the result that I want. That doesn't mean that is going to happen. But I just knew I know myself and the way that I operate. And I was just like, I, I don't want to leave any stone unturned. <laughs> um, not to say that it even did anything. But for me, it did in, in, in my mental space. So um, I tried to take them this exact same night or exact same time every night. 
Um, so that you have to block off because I don't know about you, but like, I'm not trying to take shots like out on the road or at a friend's <laughs> house or whatever. I mean, I'm not saying that you can't, but for me, like I wanted the comfort of my home. And I also watched the videos as I did them every time too. So I, you know, wanted my computer set up and everything like that. Um, and then again, you know, I'm going from Oakland to San Francisco for my appointment. So there's the time, the travel time of going, the time of day, like getting there, making sure that, you know, you have your appointment, you know, all of that kind of stuff. And then going back home. So that's a commitment. And, and like you said, yours was every other day. I, I wish I had my calendar in front of me, but I, I want to say it was like every three or four days for me. Um, I know it wasn't every other day, but um, that's a commitment for sure. Then towards the end, after you get your blood test and they see that they're maturing in the way that they want them to be and that they're really close to the size that they want to be, they're like, hey, it's time for this trigger shot. And the trigger shot is to stop them from basically shedding um, like your eggs normally do um, for you to have your cycle, right? Um, they don't want that. They want to harvest them or, or retrieve them. Mm -hmm. um, and so that shot you have to take at a specific time. Specific time, y'all. If you mess up the trigger shot, you don't mess up the last 14 days. Regina Townsend, a broken brown egg. If y'all don't follow her, you need to do it right away. It says you have to be focused and intentional during this process. Yes. And that is very, very true. And She Shall Rain joined us. That's Ebony Ford, who's a warrior here um, with the March of Dimes, who had a beautiful preemie, our little baby Rain. And so she is here shouting you out, Alicia, joining the crew. So yes, you guys, you have to be intentional and focused during this process. And so, and you were. So the trigger shot, just like, just like you said, we had to take it. Mama Stu was in there. Mama Stu, y'all, now look, I know she'd be on here, like giving y'all your likes. We'd be loving Mama Stu in the comment section. But when I tell you she hollered more at the shots than I do, I'm so <laughs> grateful that I had my mama with me. I'm so grateful. But we hollered, child. We were terrified. And, I, and, and to that, because we did all those tears, Alicia, I also want people to know, you know, somebody said to me once, I was on a diet. And I really, really wanted this cookie. And I ordered it at the restaurant and I had an attitude after I ordered it, you know, and I said, dang, I'm going to be on that treadmill for like another 45 minutes over this cookie. And I'm going to have to do extra weights over this cookie. And my girlfriend said to me, can you stop? If you want to eat the cookie, can you eat it with joy? And I went, oh, y'all, mm. if y'all going to freeze your eggs, if you're going to go through a process as hard as infertility, IVF, or anything, there is a place in it where you can find some joy, mm -hmm. where you can find some laughter, because it is so vulnerable. But when you look in that mirror and you say, I'm doing this for me, there's some joy in it. When you, my mom was screaming, girl, I'm scared. There's some joy in it. Yeah. When your friend is saying, girl, you're going to get some mature eggs. There's some joy in it. So while you're in this process where you're focused and you're intentional and you're crying and you're all this, remember, remember to find your joy in it. Yeah. And so here we are at the trigger shot. Now take us to the morning of, because you were doing a nighttime trigger shot. That means your retrieval would have been in the morning, right? Yes. Yep. Okay, so take us to the morning of the retrieval, child. Well, that night before I took the trigger shot, and I had been by myself through the whole process, right? I just couldn't take it anymore, so I called my mama. And I was like, Mom, Amen. she lives in Oregon. And I was like, can you fly up here and be with me tomorrow? Because I, I need you. And yeah. she's like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so she flew up here, um, and she had been vaccinated at that point so i just felt more comfortable with her flying as well personally but so she flew up here um and honestly it just it made me feel so much better um to have her here but um you know you can't eat the night before um which i like to eat so that was a little uncomfortable but not that bad um and then you know it, it was just the the actual retrieval process um i've had a couple surgeries in my day um, from playing sports and I've been put under, you know, a couple, like four times at that point. So um, I kind of knew what to expect in that instance. I was a little bit nervous um, 
about the amount but again my friend had told me like listen they're gonna be there and I just I just felt this like security mm -hmm. after those words she had given me those words um and also again just like the um actual fertility tests right um I just felt like this was another way to show me my path like mm -hmm. if if I didn't have um if my eggs weren't viable or or something you know of that nature had happened during the retrieval process, um, I would have another way of knowing where I should go. Um, and I, I had, you know, my mom and I prayed before um, the retrieval happened. I got in there, he started asking me sports questions. And of course, I wanted to talk to him about that because I love sports and I was out. And then you're gone. <laughs> and I was out. Yeah. And then um, I woke up back in the, the position that I was with my mom prior because they actually let her come back with me, which was, mm. I'm very thankful for that. Um, to, you know, recovery and all that. Um, however, I will say this, and this is what I really want to stress, especially um, when we're talking about do it sooner than later. Um, when the doctor came in to tell me how many eggs I had, uh, she wrote it down because um, we were kind of in a shared room, like just picture like a ER where there's curtains, you mm -hmm. know, in between everybody. Um, and she whispered to me, we don't like, we don't like to say it out loud because not everyone gets the same result. Um, sorry. Um, probably about five minutes after she told me and about five minutes after she told me and I was happy with the result, you know, yeah. um, because, you know, at 40, I didn't know how many eggs I was going to get. Um, a woman started crying in, in one of the other areas. Um, and it was just like a, a cry that just like hurt your soul. Like you knew she, she had heard something bad and I, where we were at, I knew what it was. And so my mom and I prayed for her without, you know, obviously we couldn't see each other. Um, and then later, um, the nurse called me with the, vi you know, how many were viable, right? Um, Cause they didn't tell, they told me how many they got, but they didn't tell me how many were viable. Right. And she said, when you share this, I want you to tell people that it's not normal yeah. for someone at your age to get this many eggs. Because I don't want them thinking they can wait till 40 and they'll get 13 of them that are viable. She's like, because to give you perspective, there was, and she obviously didn't tell me names, but yeah. She was like, there was a woman who was 41 and one that was 42 and they got one egg and two eggs and none of them were viable. And so I just, I just want to give love to anyone in this room and out there that sees this, that, that has happened to them. I, I want to give you love and I want to know that I work you into my prayers. I work you into my prayers. And also, I don't want you to wait if God or anything is tugging on you to say, do this no matter what your age is like, and, and just know that even if it's not the result that we would want, it's a result that you need in your path. Don't delay, don't delay. Um, as we've been talking about in this, if it is something that you're called to do, the tools will be there for you, walk forward and they will unfold, um, but don't delay. And when, when that nurse told me that, it, it, it just hit me to my soul. She was like, just tell people this isn't normal because they, they have to know. I, um, okay, so you got me. Um, thank you. Thank you for using your voice with grace, humility, Sometimes we have a little bit of survivor's remorse when we get a good number of eggs. Thank you to your doctor that was uh, kind enough to write it down as to not trigger the patients that were beside you. But let me just say this. Thank you to you and your mom for praying for the women that were in a shared room with you that may not have gotten the news that you've gotten. And I hope y'all that, I hope that you feel encouraged. Mom, can you get my, sorry. Can you get my uh, alarm system? My alarm just went off. 
oh, maybe that was the Lord. Because I said, I hope you feel encouraged. And it went off. Yep. I hope you feel encouraged that somebody is praying for you. Mm -hmm. That you don't even know. That you've never met. That may be in the bed beside you. I hope you feel encouraged that even in the midst of news that feels really hard to take, um, that somebody is, is thinking of you because that's such a beautiful story, whoever was laying beside you. I will say this, um, God will use you in many different ways. Hold on a second, y'all. You know how to do it. Mama Sue's turning off the alarm. I don't know if you can hear her. Okay, the, the burglars aren't coming. Thank you, Mama. You can say thank you. You can say you're welcome. Thanks, Mom. <laughs> you can say you're welcome. Um, Mama Sue knows this, and this is something that's very important that I want you guys to, to hear. And I, I mentioned it a little bit at the beginning. You never know how God is going to use your story. Um, for the warriors that are always here, when I froze my eggs, just like you, Alicia, I got a very good number not a normal number. I got 32 eggs and 29 were frozen. Mm. And hold on a second. Mom, I need you to close the door because I can hear you. She's watching y'all, but she's like right there. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I got uh, 32 eggs and 29 were, were viable and frozen. Um, but I did not have a platform that I was ever going to use for this. Uh, a couple years after that, my dear, dear friend Shannon was diagnosed with colon cancer. Mm. And this is why we have to fight for legislation for cryopreservation and things like that. Uh, and credits and asking your employer, like you said, Shannon was fighting for her life. She wasn't mm. fighting to be a mom. She was fighting to stay alive. And when she had to go through radiation, they asked her, do you want to freeze your eggs? Because the radiation would most likely take your fertility. Mm. We were supposed to have lunch that day. It was a day that she was feeling good. Mm. She was feeling strong. And I got dressed. And she called me and she was in tears. And she said, I can't do it. I've just heard this news that I would have to freeze my eggs and I just can't take Another shot, another anything. What is this freezing your eggs thing? I don't even know what it is. And I got in the car and I said, Shannon, don't worry. I'm on my way. I did it. I froze my eggs. I'm on my way. Yeah. I hadn't shared with my close friend that I went through this process. And I didn't know until I put that needle in her belly what God put in me to do this. Mm. Shannon and I froze her eggs together, her husband in the other room, her mom even there, but I had went through it. So you, you're you offering a sense of uh, peace and understanding and I've, I've walked this walk. Shannon got five eggs, y'all. I'm convinced she fought harder to live for those five. Mm. I'm convinced her life was prolonged yeah. Because of those five eggs. And I want you guys to also hear that a woman that was going that had already gone through chemo, surgery, and about to have radiation, her body still gave her five. Yes. We are made up of miracles. Amen whether you have regular periods or not, whether you have a uterus or not, whether you have ovaries or not, as Alicia said, mm -hmm. there are so many ways to be a mother. I'm mm -hmm. convinced Shannon is mothering us through this right now from her heavenly home. Yes. So I want you guys to really take everything that was said here and, um, and know that it's vulnerable, know that it's, empowering yes. and know that your story will help somebody else. You just don't know the path yet. You don't, but it will. You so, were built to tell it and built to change people with it. Oh, 
Yes. And that prayer that you guys gave, that you and your mom gave the woman beside you, um, may her miracle happen soon. So let me say this to you. So you said you may do it again. Can you talk a little bit about why and, and that process that you may be thinking of right now? Um, well, you know, I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. I, I'm really not sure. There's one side of me that says, God brought you to this cycle and all you need is this 13. Mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. And, and that there, that's probably my more dominant side, right? Because yeah. I, I'm a woman of faith, as I said, and I know that God, if God's going to do it, he's going to do it. So that 13 that he had, you know, he was just like, well, let's, you know, I got this 13 and we going to do what we going to do with it. So that's, that's the more dominant side. That's, that's most of me. Right. Um, but then talking with the doctors, um, they said that it takes around 10 to 15 eggs to probably make a viable embryo. Um, there's the probability, the percentages, um, say this to them. And so with 13, I'm in the sweet spot, right? Um, I'm there. However, you know, do I want to increase that worldly probability and worldly percentage? Mm -hmm. um, that is where I'm at. And so I don't know. I don't know, but I'm exploring it. And obviously, you know, I just started a new job um, and that has God written all over it. And that's a whole nother, so that's a whole nother hour we could talk about. However, um, I'm diving into that insurance right now to see if he gave me some more tools, right? Um, and I'm just trying to just gauge whether it's something that he wants me. I'm praying a lot about it. Um, and I'm just seeing where it goes. But I know at the end of the day that I do know that if God will use that 13 and he'll use it well, if, if well, that oof, is the path that he wants oof. And he will use it well. Yes. Allow me to return the favor to the woman that was lying next to you. And allow me to use this space of warriors. Warriors, y'all know what I'm going to ask you to do in the comment section. Put 13 and prayer hands in the comment mm -hmm. section. And I want Alicia to be able to see all of your 13 prayers. So put the number 13 in prayer hands in the comment section. I'm going to wait because I want to <laughs> be able to see them all there. And I want to stand in agreement with what you and your mom, here they come. Thank I want to stand in agreement with what you and your mom did by praying for the women that you didn't know the nameless woman that you didn't know. Mm -hmm. And I want this crowd here. Look at all the beautiful, all oh, somebody put 13 <laughs> prayer hands. I want to stand in agreement for your 13, because one thing you said was the worldly average. And I got what you were saying, not what God said, but yes. what the world said, the worldly yeah. average. So just look, Alicia, you take a moment in and look at all your 13 and your prayer hands. And you know that this community this community right now is you and mama praying for Listen. that other woman. We got you. We Ooh. standing side by side right there with you. Mm. Look at all those prayer hands of 13. So 13 is a beautiful number for today. So yeah. before we, um, before we ended and thank Alicia for her amazingness, if there are any questions, you guys, as those 13s come up, I see them. I love them. I'm just going to look to see if anybody <laughs> has a question. Thank you, everyone, for your 13 in your hands. Thank you. We got you, girl. We got, oh. we got you. <laughs> we can't let you be just, listen, listen. You have to, what you did when you got that number and prayed it forward, knowing that another woman beside you, because that's the reality of life. We're all going to have a different story. And sometimes when we give so much, you use your platform to tell the story, to say it's not normal. Like your doctor said, make sure you tell them to do it early. We yes. also have to make room to receive. Yes. Amen. To receive, to receive the prayers and the fortunes of others telling you, we are, we are standing in agreement with the 13 that you have. And that's what mm -hmm. this community is doing. So let me look here to see if there's any questions. If y'all have a question, put it in the question box so that we can answer. 
Um, okay, people asking us about jobs. Hold on a second here. Um, I did see one that said, can you discuss viable eggs versus just having eggs? And I thought that was a good one to answer. Okay, yes. Yeah, so we see here, please speak through the process of egg freezing. We did viable eggs. Okay, so y'all, viable eggs are, and I, Alicia, you can speak to it too. Look at all those. Teams keep I know. I love it. I, I love it. A paper towel from the kitchen because I was like, I'm gonna lose it. All this makeup gonna come off. These eyelashes gonna be on my cheeks. We are standing in agreement with the 13 that you have. Oh. Come on, healthy your future. So you guys, viable eggs are mature eggs, and they will count the chromosomes of those eggs to make sure that they would be eggs that are viable for a live birth, that they have 32 chromosomes, the right amount of chromosomes, the maturity level. So basically, when an egg that is a frozen egg that's um, fertilized with sperm, it is going to need to get to what we call a blastocyst stage before it is implanted into a woman's uterus in the endometrian lining. That can't happen unless the egg is viable, unless it has the fun unless it has the proper amount of chromosomes and the, the maturity that it needs to have. And so that's viable versus an egg that is not yet viable. Okay, so sometimes also um, pregnant, you know, a, a lot of people don't know that sometimes we may miscarry. A miscarriage is actually called a spontaneous abortion. And sometimes women don't even know that they're pregnant. Um, because they have their period, but it actually might have been a spontaneous abortion. Maybe that egg didn't have the right amount of chromosomes or something like that, and the body basically rejected it. So there's a lot of things, and I'm glad that whoever asked that question asked it, because this is what we talked about in terms of reproductive health, not being taught what our eggs are, what's viable versus not viable. Um, so is there any other questions that you have? Let me look in the question section. If you see something, Alicia, just call it out. Some of these we have, um, we have discussed. What does this comment say here? Would either of you be open to connecting for a speaking event at my employer? Our pathway, hold on, our pathways to parenthood work stream is interested in talking about elective egg freezing. This was amazing tonight. Okay, so that is from... Um, Lardy Lene 21, go ahead and DM that to both of us, okay, so that we can look at that further, because I do think employers really need to, um, to know about elective egg freezing and also non-elective, meaning, like I said, with Shannon, someone that is going through an underlining condition where egg freezing mm -hmm. is their only option to save their fertility. So, um, th this is elective is one thing, but just know that's why this information is important. It's sometimes people are forced into making this decision far before their time, but the sooner, the better. Let's see. I think I have another question. Let me see here. Um, somebody here says, what is the age you will not use your eggs? Take the good says, what is the age you will not use your eggs? Do you want to speak to that before I do Alicia? You know, I actually don't have a number yet. Um, and to be honest, I don't know. I, I honestly am moving forward in God's plan. <laughs> that is what I'm doing right now in every single facet of my life. And so I really do not know the answer to that yet. Um, I'd be lying if I did. <laughs> yes. So. Yes. And, and um, what I will say is I don't know the answer to that yet in terms of personally, uh, fertility clinics are they they vary in what their um of what their standards are just so you guys know a fertility specialist a fertility clinic is the only healthcare entity that has to report its success rate to the CDC the only one so mm -hmm. not your ear nose and throat doctor not your regular GP that has to report its success rate to the CDC. So that actually holds fertility uh, specialists and clinics accountable. That's actually something that's really good, but it actually is also helping, uh, helping us. Now, some fertility clinics in terms of what is the age that you will use your eggs, that, that can be interpreted a couple different ways. Some fertility clinics will not implant an embryo in a woman past age 50, for instance. Some will go a little bit longer or 
past age 45. It really varies even from clinic to clinic to country to country. Um, in the UK, it's, it's also very different. So depending upon the clinic. Now, in terms of the eggs viability, if that was the question about what's the the age where your eggs are no longer viable, each woman is different. And each um, possibility of getting a viable egg through egg freezing or IVF is a particular thing for a particular woman. Um, but you do need to ask the questions, what's the, the, the age where you stop implantation into someone's uterus? We did have um, um, the Cade Foundation um, that was here talking about her mom, who was her gestational carrier at age 55 and wound up carrying uh, triplets, triplets at age 55 after she had uh, three, six, I'm sorry, it was six, Regina, help me, six rounds of IVF that failed um, before, yeah, yeah, before her mom carried. So it's, it's different. The Princess Warrior says in the UK, they won't allow a woman over 46 to use her own eggs to conceive. Oh, she said over 45. Um, uh, so that's that's in the UK. So just hear that. Go ahead, Alicia, did you want to talk I, to that? I actually want to talk to you more because this is something I'm diving into more now that I've been through the process, but the legislation of things, we don't, we can, I don't, you probably have already lives that I can um, look at and watch um, in that. But like, even saying something like that, like in the UK, you can't use your own eggs past the age of 46 there's something so wrong with that mm -hmm. um and so i want to dive into more about how to fight things like that because no woman should ever be told that like you can't use your own eggs that uh, no um, woman should ever be told that yeah. and and what we can do is we're going to hook you up with michelle polston she's on the board of resolve with regina townsend of broken brown egg uh, Princess Warrior, we'll talk to you about that since you're in the UK and there's we've had a couple of lives from the UK um, and the healthcare system is very, very different there, even with not not having annual pap smears. So with certain things. So, yeah. Yeah. So there's a lot to learn. You guys go to warrior-wednesdays.com, warrior-wednesdays.com, and you will see over 20 episodes of what Alicia and I are doing right now. And you will be able to learn so much about the healthcare system in the US and in the UK and all of these things. Because when you say that, Alicia, what you're really saying is we got to change that. Like, how do we help our fellow sisters, our fellow people, people with ovaries? How do we help them fight? How do we use our voices for each other? Because nobody should be told you can't use your own eggs over age 45 when we know people can naturally get pregnant after 50. I'm not saying a lot. I'm just saying it happens. It so does. Michelle Polston says, hey, Tall Swag, happy to chat about it with you. She works on the Resolve uh, board, Michelle Polston of Her Normal, and she does a lot of stuff with, um, with uh, legislation. Regina Townsend says, Alicia, girl, welcome to the fam. Um, <laughs> and I'm going to see if there's any more questions here. Um, I think we got also do that. I do, I do have one more thing to say, too. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. Well, two. One is thank you guys for standing with me in my 13 eggs. That means the world. And thank you for even calling that out because I needed it in, in every way possible. Um, and also, and this is something that's been on my heart for a while now. Um, I want us to obviously share this with anyone and everyone. Um, women obviously need to know about their fertility health, but don't be afraid to share this with men too. Yes because it has been amazing the amount of my male friends who have hit me and said hey i need to know more about this i i don't know anything about this or it's come up in conversation with just like random men in passing like at the grocery store or something i mean seriously like me too and another yeah and it and i i know that men want to know about this just as much as we do even though it's not, I mean, they also have a, a part in that, especially in a relationship or maybe they want to have children on their own or, or whatever the case may be. Um, and so just I, don't be afraid to share this with men, please do. Um, and I just think it's, it's important to share it with anyone and everyone. Um, I'm because so glad that you said that. And, and I'm so glad that men are, are coming up to you and speaking truth to this. 
we have at Warriors, we've actually had an episode with men. And Ryan Ford's wife, uh, and She Shall Reign is here. We've had men, three very brave men speak to infertility with their partners and even male factor infertility. And I have always said that um, when we have people ask us, when are you going to use your frozen eggs? Or when are you going to have a baby? Or where's the baby? It is usually, y'all, 99% of the time when somebody puts pressure on me, I froze my eggs to take the pressure off, not to put it back on. Okay. And 99% of the time when somebody asks me, when are you going to defrost your eggs? Or are you going to go to a sperm bank or use a friend's sperm? It's a woman. It's a woman asking me that question. Yeah. And they are usually a woman that already has children, which means mm -hmm. they're not dealing with the, the answers, the results and the circumstances of the question that they're asking. Men, however, are the ones that, other than my warrior friends, of course, that call me on Mother's Day to say happy almost a Mother's Day. Men are the ones, and I tell them on the first, second, third date, I froze my eggs, Jeff. I let them okay. know right away. And here's the other thing. When, for those that may be thinking about it, when you do freeze your eggs, and if you are dating, and I don't care what gender you date, if you know you want to be a mother and that you've done this thing, you date with a different type of purpose. Yeah. Because now you are really focused on what your future is and someone that would not be a co-parent to that baby, you just don't have time for it. You don't even take it personally. But I'm really, really glad that you brought up telling men because I actually had a man after a live come into the DM and say, can you give me a clinic in New York? Because after watching about all that women go through, I realized that I stayed with a woman far longer than I should have when I knew I didn't want to go the distance with her. And I took fertility years from her and I didn't realize it. And so we need to share with men what this process is for us so that yeah. they can be a part of it and so that they can be accountable to it too and so that they know how to love us better. When we suffer in silence, not only do we suffer alone, but the people that we say we love suffer in a way because they, we're not inviting them to help us. Yeah. So we really got to get it out. What did Regina say? Somebody mm -hmm. said, so true, Regina. She said, because as women, we've been conditioned to think of that as a part of what makes us women, what makes us women. So they are just going in on these comment sections, y'all. I am about to bring this to a close. And I just want to say to you, is there any last words, Miss Alicia J, tall swag, honey, that you can give us here as we had this amazing conversation about both of our journeys through egg freezing? Um, I honestly want to give the last word to you. I really do. What you're doing is so important. Like, you are literally walking in your purpose and doing these lives and in doing the movie that you're doing and all the work that you're doing and connecting people and giving people fertility clinics so that they can right their wrong that they did to somebody. I mean, that, <laughs> that in itself is a short story on its own, okay? Mm -hmm. But just, I just wanna thank you. I wanna thank you and, and thank you for thinking of me to share my story because you're doing, you're giving me a platform to do what God told me to do. So I want to thank you. And um, I, I can't thank you enough for what you're doing. Um, it's phenomenal. And it's, it's a God thing. So. Well, I, um, I received that, like I told you to receive those, those 13s. And you guys give Alicia some flowers, as I say my last my last thoughts to you. I want to thank you. Um, I want to thank you for using your, your brain the way you did, for listening to God the way you did, for being proactive about your life, your health, for finding resources. I want to thank you for being brave enough because I want to be clear. It takes an incredible amount of courage to go through this process as a single person. Y'all need to know that. An incredible amount of courage, Alicia. I stand with you having done it myself as a single woman, not knowing what's ahead. Mm. I wanna thank you 
for doing what I couldn't do at the time, which is in the moment, letting the world see you at your most raw, vulnerable, and unknowing of what the outcome would be place in your life. Mm. To open that up in real time takes an extra special kind of warrior. Mm. And that's who you are. And I know as you see those flowers coming up that the most special thing about it is when one of those lucky 13 is a baby you hold in your arms that you'll be able to show them that mommy stood on her own to make sure that one day we would meet. Mm -hmm. They will be able to see exactly who they come from, exactly the woman that you were at that time, and exactly the type of mom that they have. So I thank you for being so open and so transparent I thank you for being so powerful with your voice and so intentional about making sure you say all the things that needed to be said to women. Doing it earlier, that the number is, is, was, was not a normal number to make sure you're not giving them misguided or false hope, but that you're telling them the realities of the situation. I welcome you to Warrior Wednesdays and to this family. If you ever need anything, all of these women, I already know, y'all DM her, let her know who you are, Regina, Michelle, Princess Warrior, they will let you know that we stand beside you spiritually and otherwise. If you ever need us, call on us, we are your family now. So thank you so much for your time, your energy, your effort. Welcome to the family. We can't wait to see other things that you do, Tall Swag. And we will support you in any and every venture that you have. So thank you for joining us. Mm. Thank you, my love. Thank you for making me a part of the family. <laughs> ah, we got another warrior. Okay, everybody. Thank you again to Alicia J. You guys, next week we have Dr. Kendrick coming up. And it's her first time going to be sharing on Warriors about her fibroid journey. So I don't think she's on here today. I don't see her, but she will be. Um, and she worked with us with the Night in White Gala um, with uh, Fibroids Awareness Month that just passed in July. So she's going to be here with a wonderful fibroid story to share with you guys to give you information and so that you can pass along. Please pass along this live. Thank you for joining Warrior Wednesdays. You can see many, many episodes here on IGTV. You can also visit www.warrior-wednesdays.com. You can find Alicia at Tall Swag. Go follow her website. Go follow her blog here. Go look at everything that she's gone through. She is an amazing person to know. We are so grateful to have you here. Call on us on any time. We can't see what else you're going to do in this world. We just love you for it. So thank you, my love. Love you back. I'm All right, safe. girl. Absolutely. <laughs> Talk to you soon, love. Lucky 13, right. y'all. Yes, 13. <laughs> 13, 13. <laughs> All right, my darling, I will talk to you soon. Okay. You guys, thank you so much for joining Warrior Wednesdays. I will see you next week. Bye, Bye. y'all.